Is it through here? Yes, but watch out, there's some floorboards. <coughs> Missing right in front of the door. You OK? Well, I am, but the makeup definitely isn't. Oh, no, the box has sprung open and the powder pot has exploded. Why did you let it go? I couldn't help it. That could have been me. I could have broken my leg. Yes, yes, all right, but you didn't. There should be a sign up outside and a risk assessment. Well, I'm sure there is somewhere, but that's not going to help. We need to retrieve the box. I tell you what, you lay on your stomach and hang over the edge and I'll hold on to your feet. I, I, I'm not doing that. It's filthy and wet down there. There could be rats or anything. I could fall in and catch something nasty. It's only the field underneath the football pavilion. Verity, you're agile enough to reach through and grab hold of the strap. Come on, I won't let you go. Can't we wait until one of the men gets here? Certainly not. We don't need men to sort this out. They'll only delay things. Oh, they'll have a mug of tea and a site meeting before they do anything. Come on, Verity, we can do this. Well, hold on to me round my waist. I don't want to drop too far. I'm not happy about this. Come on, be brave, child. Or shall I do it and you hold on to me? I, I, I don't want to be rude, Adele, but I'm not sure I'm strong enough to hold on to you. If you start to slide downwards, then you're going to take me with you. All right. I'll do it. Oh, oh, uh, uh, oh tra come on, Verity. Uh, I can't quite reach it. <laughs> get me up, get me up. I'm trying to. Oh, he you're heavier than you look. What have we got here? <laughs> Need a hand, girls? Out of the way, Adele. It's OK, Verity. I've got you. Oh, 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 thank goodness. There was something moving down there. I think it may have been a rat. And she's worried about a rat down there. Oh, you poor lamb. Oh, for goodness sakes, put her down, Orlando. Never mind about rats under the pavilion, Verity. It's the ones on two legs on the ground you need to worry about. It's lovely to see you too, my little viper. Now, Verity. What were you trying to do? She dropped the makeup box through the hole in the floor. You make it sound as though I did it on purpose. I nearly broke my neck. There should have been a sign outside. And why is it here anyway? Yes, sweetheart, I quite agree. I'd sue for mental distress if I were you. What? I'm sure there was a sign outside. Let me see if I can get the box for you. Oh, oh, I'm covered in powder. <laughs> yes, it exploded on impact. Nice scent, though. Mmm, better than the tang of sweaty jock straps. Is the football changing room the best we can manage for a dressing room, Adele? There is a sign, Verity. It's just that when the doors open, you can't see it. And Orlando, we are performing on a football field. It's the only outdoor site in the village large enough since the school closed. Well, it's not what I'm used to. Do you know, Verity, when I were Roger Moore's stunt double in the Bond movies, I had my own dressing room with a star on the door. Only because he put it there himself. He spent hours making it. Roger insisted I were well looked after. As he said, I can't make an action film without my brave stuntman. <laughs> oh, I do miss my Hollywood days. <laughs> Hollywood? More like Boreham Wood. Pinewood, actually. The only Bond film made at Elstree was Never Say Never Again, and that were before my time. And I did work in Hollywood itself. Of course, Verity, I spent much of my time filming on location. Oh, wow, Orlando. You've led such an exciting life. Being a stuntman must have been dangerous. Weren't you ever scared? Oh, quite often. We stuntmen face death on a daily basis. I miss it. 
I miss it all so much. The closest I get to an adrenaline rush now is in the bidding room at an auction. Huh? Orlando, lovely as it is to hear your reminiscences, Verity needs to get on with setting up the makeup bar. Oh, yes. Sorry, Adele. Thanks for rescuing the makeup, Orlando. And Verity, I'm looking forward to introducing you to my friend Kat. She was a makeup artist on Granada TV. She's very gifted. She's very bossy. If she gives you any hassle, Verity, just let me know. I'll look after you. Really, Orlando, <laughs> you should know better. You know how naive and impressionable Verity is. Besides, you're old enough to be a father. I am not. You're only jealous. Of course I am. I'm just trying to encourage her. That's what I'm worried about. I promised her mother I'd look after her. She's fine. Just got overprotective parents, that's all. She's much too old still to be living at home. It would do her good to go out with an older man. Help her mature. Don't you dare. Verity, don't you listen to anything Orlando says. Oh. Take my advice, Verity. And don't listen to my bitter and twisted ex-wife. What ho! Oh, this is a bit dangerous right in front of the door. Someone could break their neck. Yes, apparently they've been doing some rewiring. The missing planks are outside. Oh, of course, now that a man has arrived, <laughs> Harry, perhaps you could put them back. Oh, ha-ha, my love. Morning, Harry. I'll give you an hand with them if you like. We could do with a cup of tea first, though. Perhaps do a bit of a sight survey. Who's putting the kettle on? Oh, I will. I hope they did a risk assessment about this hole. That's what I said. Oh, what's that smell? Stale footballers. They were supposed to leave this place clean. I knew this would happen. You men have to make a meal of everything. Can we just get on with covering up the hole in the floor before anyone else arrives? We have a dress rehearsal to do. Are we still going ahead, then? But why wouldn't we be? Well, Good Friday's only five days away and the forecast is for heavy snow. I thought we were meeting to call it off. Nah, bad weather won't matter. The village will still turn out. It's about the only highlight of the year. Put your thermals on, Harry, and you won't notice the cold. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit chesty at the best of times. I'm a <coughs> martyr to my asthma. Well, put two pairs on then and tuck your inhaler in them. You should have been with Roger and me in the Italian Alps filming for your eyes only. Talk about cold. There were brass monkeys bawling their eyes out. We just got on with it. I didn't know you were in that one. Oh, yeah. It were me who skied over the lunch table in the famous snow chase scene. In fact, it were my idea, and we did it in one take. Oh, we professionals soon forget about the cold once the adrenaline starts pumping. My dad's got all the old Bond films on video. I see if he can find it. It might be one of the ones on Betamax, though. Nice one, Verity. What a put down. I told you. You're a dad's era. Aha. Tea's up. Oh, good. Dark chocky bickies, less calories. I can have three. I liked Roger Moore in The Persuaders. I can't remember what his character was called. Lord Brett Sinclair. That's where I started out as a runner. Great times. Tony Curtis and Roger were a pair of L raisers. I was just a kid then. Of course, you know, Harry, I actually dated Jamie Lee Curtis. In fact, she proposed to me. Get away. She was very smitten. She was more drunk, more like. Why didn't you say yes? Oh, I was too young to think about marriage. I didn't want to break her heart, but... Oh, please. Her father found out you were stalking her and had you run off the set. I was not stalking her. Adele still can't bear to hear about the other loves in my life without getting toxic. Jamie Lee and I are still good friends. <coughs> what is it? Over there, in the corner, something moved and he's got red eyes. Uh, has it? 
Don't worry, Verity, we're in safe hands. This won't phase Orlando. No. Oh, no, of course not. Um, uh, pass me that broom. <laughs> oh, Verity, please stop doing that. I think you and Adele should go outside. Things may get nasty. Oh, for heaven's sake, get out of the way. <laughs> no! Wimps! It's not a rat, it's a mouldy red jockstrap. <coughs> Developing its own ecosystem by the smell of it. Oh. Very brave. Uh, I would have taken the broomandle in case. It always makes sense to be careful. I used to keep a shovel handy to deal with the rats in my tent when we were on location filming in Florida. <laughs> Did I say something funny? <laughs> well, well, kind of. It just occurred to me that there is an Orlando in Florida and you were an Orlando in Florida. You could have been an Orlando in Orlando. <laughs> yes. Uh, Orlando is indeed in Florida. Uh, however, we were on location in the Everglades. <laughs> there, the rats were the least of our concerns. Alligators posed a much greater threat. Well, I were all right. I knew how to handle them. Oh, stop it, Orlando. The closest you've ever got to handling an alligator is shoehorning on those ridiculously expensive shoes you are so proud of. Adele doesn't know what she's talking about. I saved a little girl's life by wrestling an alligator to its death. Her father ran a chain of footwear shops and insisted on having the creature made into several pairs of shoes for me. And they still fit. Cobblers. Yes, indeed. I believe they made them. I I'm ever so sorry, but I dropped the milk when I saw the rat jockey thingy. And now he's eaten all the chocolate biscuits. Oh, sorry. No problem. I'll nip it to Thirsk and get some more. Shame we haven't got a village shop anymore. Shouldn't be too long. I don't believe this. We are never going to get on. And where the hell is Cat? She was finishing her makeup when I left the house and said she wouldn't be long. Oh, I better phone her. No wonder she's not here yet, then. She's probably re grouting her crow's feet. <laughs> I'm looking forward to meeting her. Orlando, did you know she used to work on TV as a makeup artist? I'm hoping she'll be able to teach me a few things. Oh, I can teach you all you need to know. <laughs> oh, she's here at last. Hello, everyone! How are you feeling? The pain is going all the way up my leg now. Is it time for me to have some more painkillers? The hospital said it were only a sprain. Only a sprain? How do they know? They should have done an MRI. I don't think they do those willy-nilly. I'm sure they know what they're doing. The doctor said it would feel much better in a day or so. Well, I shall just have to use a stick on Friday. Well, who's ever heard of Mary limping up the Via Dolorosa behind the cross? Here are your painkillers. <laughs> I should take the lot if I were you. Save having to remember to take them every four hours. Oh, ha, bloody ha. Thank you. Well, I'm off. I'm going to supervise the erection of the stage and the cross. Cast me professional eye over things. I'm sure the local builders know what they're doing. It doesn't do any harm to make sure. Besides, Mr Risk Assessment is going to be there, so I may be needed to keep the boys from throttling him. Bless him. Harry's very keen. Oh, is this the Harry that covets the part of Jesus but is too fat? Yeah. I did feel very mean about telling him that we couldn't have a roll of fat hanging over the sacred loincloth. I thought that were very cruel of you to tell him that. I spent hours counselling him in the pub afterwards. Did you? Oh, well, speaking of the public house, Gemma texted me to say you were in there with Verity last night and your heads were very close together several times. We were just talking. Anyway... It's none of your business. We are divorced. In which case, please would you move the rest of your stuff into your half of the house? I don't want portrait-sized photographs of you staring at me from the walls. All right, I'll move them. 
There are people that would pay good money to have pictures of me enhancing their decor. Good. You can sell them in your shop with the other antiques. All right, I will. They are vintage after all, like fine claret. It's not everyone who has a photo session with Patrick Litchfield. But I shan't be selling any of you. People don't want snapshots of Lambrini girls who've lost their fizz. Oh! See you later, ladies. Close your mouth, Adele. There's a draw. I'll teach him. What are you doing with that picture? Ah, oh, here it is. What do you think of Orlando in um, Edna Everidge glasses, sporting a goatee beard and a blacked-out tooth? <gasps> you know how precious he is. He'll go mad. Well, unfortunately, it will come off with a bit of soap and water. Uh, oh, no, it won't. You've used a permanent glass marker. <gasps> oh, serves him right. Oh, he'll have to have it reframed. That'll cost him. You still love him, don't you? Certainly not. Why are you living in the same house, then? Convenience. It's a lovely house and plenty big enough for two apartments. Olivia's pregnant, so we're about to have our first grandchild. And we want to enjoy him or her together. You know how neither of us can bear to be left out of anything. I've no intention of remarrying, and neither has Orlando. Of course, we are free to bring people home if the occasion arises. Uh, except if it's this verity. Yeah. Look, it's, it's not because I'm jealous. Really? Really. She's just very naive. And I promised her mother I'd look after her. Oh, I don't think Orlando is interested in her. He's just using her to wind you up. Rubbish. He's just trying to pull a young bit of stuff. Prove that he still can. Silly old fool. Oh, whatever you say. But the Orlando I know likes sophistication in a woman and this verity sounds a little gauche for his tastes. Now, about this passion play, Benedict has promised he'll be here early on Thursday evening so you can run through it all with him then. He took the part of Jesus at uni last year, so he won't need much instruction. Um, he knows the seven final sentences on the cross. That's about all he has to say, isn't it? Yep, it's very much a tableau affair. We can never rely on the sound system, so there's lots of gesturing and angst. Oh, I can't wait to see Orlando in his Roman senator's costume. It looks quite short. I haven't seen his knobbly knees since we were all at that holiday camp together. Oh, yes. Benedict was about two, wasn't he? Oh, he was a lovely little boy. He put up with our Olivia playing a bossy little mother to him. Yes, he's a very gentle boy. A real blessing in my life. Did you ever manage to contact his father? No, I've never told anybody else about the circumstances of his birth. Well, I've been so worried since he turned 18 that he might go digging. Well, he won't find anything, will he? You don't even know who his father is. Uh, no, it's not that. I just don't want him finding out about my marriage to Sam. The last thing I need is him coming back into my life. He nearly killed me when he found out I was pregnant. Well, he knew it couldn't be his. I'm still scared after all these years. So Benedict doesn't even know you were married? No. My parents and I thought it was best. And in an effort to disappear, I reverted back to my maiden name and even started using my middle name. So Emily Carter became Catherine Smith. Benedict thinks his dad died. Only you and my parents know what really happened, so please don't say anything. Of course not. It's your secret. And you've never told Orlando? God, no. He can never keep anything quiet. Does Benedict look anything like his father? I can't really remember. Well, he does have a tendency to run to fat, as my mother says, so he has to be very disciplined with his food. I do remember his dad had a bit of a Buddha belly, so maybe that's where he gets it from. But he's also very sensitive and caring, and from what I remember, so was his dad. Such a shame you never managed to track him down. Well, I did try. 
Still, that's all water under the bridge now. <laughs> that photograph of Orlando is hilarious. Yeah. Do you think nail varnish removal would get it off? I hear on the grapevine that you and Verity were having a drink in here last night. Yeah, she was still a bit upset about that business with the jockstrap and Cat falling through the hole. I feel sorry for the kid. She doesn't have much of a life. She's well into her thirties and I'm sure she's still a virgin. You wouldn't, would you? No. I prefer a bit of experience. And anyway, you are a bit older than her, aren't you? I'm not that much older. Anyway, I were only talking to Michael Douglas the other day about the benefits of an age difference in a relationship. You know Michael Douglas? Oh, yes. We often have a round of golf together when I'm stateside. Wow, you really move in elevated circles. Do you ever stunt double for him? Aye, I certainly did. Jewel of the Nile. Amazing. When the going gets tough... The tough get going. <laughs> What do you want? Well, a Catherine Zeta-Jones look-alike would suit me down to the ground. I mean, what do you want to drink? Oh, a, a pint of bit. Oh, perhaps a half a pint. I'm supposed to be on a diet. I am not sitting in a pub with a bloke drinking halves. Have a pint and leave some of it if you must. A couple of pints of the usual, please, Gemma. I'm ahead of you, Orlando. There's yours. Actually, Orlando, there's something I've been wanting to talk to you about. I need some advice. Well, if you're in need of counselling, we'd better go and sit away from the bar, or it will be all round the village in a matter of minutes. Oh, ha, ha. I'll put the drinks on your tab, then. I've not had much experience with the opposite sex, or with my own sex, for that matter. Blimey, Harry. I'm not sure I needed to know that. Yes, sorry, just thinking aloud. Cheers. OK, lay it on me. Well, there's someone I quite like. I've only really had one, you know, encounter, and that turned into a bit of a nightmare. Go on, I could do with a laugh. Counsellors are not supposed to laugh. I'm not your counsellor. Oh, all right. Tell me about your nightmare and I'll try not to laugh. Well, it was a long time ago, about 20 years or so. I lived in Norfolk at the time and was over in Cambridgeshire for a health and safety conference at a place called Ely. Oh, yes, I've heard of it. So what happened? Well, I didn't like being away from home. I've never been a good mixer. So I usually stayed in my hotel room in the evenings, had my meals there and all that. <laughs> no wonder you haven't had much experience. You have to make an effort. Put yourself out there. The mountain won't come to you, you know. Well, that's just it, you see. It did. The waitress who brought my meal up to me was very friendly. She mentioned she'd just finished her shift and was going home. But I asked her if she'd like to stay and have a drink. I don't know what came over me. <laughs> Lust, probably. Possibly. Well, I was trying to practice my presentation for the next day and she offered to listen to it. She was really helpful. We found we had quite a lot in common. We even went to the same resort in Mallorca for our holidays. Then M, the waitress, thought it would be a good idea to raid the minibar. Uh-oh. I know, a bit expensive. Oh, that weren't what I meant. Carry on. Trouble is, she couldn't half put it away, and she was quite mm, pushy, if you know what I mean. I wasn't used to drinking back then, but she was very insistent, and I discovered I quite liked the taste of vodka. The next thing I knew, I woke up with her in the bed, and we were both naked. She was asleep. She looked like an angel. You know, that's a bit of a misnomer. Angels are quite fearsome. Lots of red eyes and things. So, you don't remember whether you and she actually... Oh, I think we, you know, did it. For a brief moment, I imagined introducing her to my parents as my fiancée. It was then that I noticed she was wearing a ring on a chain around her neck. A wedding ring. She woke up and started getting emotional. She was still quite drunk and kept asking if I'd used anything. Oh, please tell me you did. 
I wasn't expecting to need anything. Anyway, we were both a bit drunk to think straight. Oh, surprised you managed it then. Me too. Anyway, she started to cry and then admitted she was married. She just didn't wear a ring at work. She showed me a photo of her husband that she kept in her purse. He looked very fit and built like the proverbial outhouse. Apparently he was a prize-winning boxer. Obviously not the sort that wins rosettes at Crufts. What? Oh, oh, no. She started getting dressed, but she wasn't too steady on her feet and she was worried about the manager seeing her. So I smuggled her out down the fire escape. I had to go with her. We were on the third floor. She could have been killed. You hero? I didn't feel much like a hero. The train station was only a short distance, so I went with her. She was in a dreadful state. I watched the train pull out and it was then that I realised... Realised what? She wanted to go to Cambridge and I put her on the train to Downham Market. <laughs> <laughs> I checked out the next morning, missed my presentation the lot. <laughs> I never heard from her again. <laughs> maybe, maybe nobody ever heard from her again. <laughs> Don't! Anything could have happened. That's why I changed my job and moved to Yorkshire. I didn't want her pugilist husband coming after me. I've never been to Mallorca again either. <laughs> that were a bit of an overreaction, weren't it? At the time, it seemed the sensible thing to do, and you said you wouldn't laugh. I said I'd try not to laugh. I didn't know it were going to be that funny. <laughs> so... What advice can I offer you? Huh? When we began this conversation, you wanted to ask my advice. I can't see I can be of much use in your 20-year-old nightmare. Oh, no, of course not. I digressed. No, well, it's not so much advice as permission. Orlando, I was wondering if, now you're divorced, you wouldn't mind me having a crack at Adele. Oh, no, you're not cutting up his clothes now, are you? I'm doing some runny repairs. Three of the Roman soldiers' skirts have lost tabs, so I'm cutting some more out of one of Orlando's old leather jackets. That jacket looks rather nice to me. I'm surprised he's donated it to the cause. Well, I'm sure he would do. You mean he doesn't know? Cat, Orlando has a wardrobe the size of his ego. He's lost track of how many leather jackets he has. <laughs> what he doesn't know won't harm him. I can never imagine you and Orlando not being a couple. Yeah, he's totally infuriating, but actually you're right. I can't imagine my life without him in it. Well, so why the divorce? After all, you were the one who filed for it. Well, we'd hit a rut and we were arguing all the time. I wanted to teach him a lesson. Except you're the one doing the learning. Yeah. Still, what's done is done. Well, it's my understanding that until the decree absolute comes through, you can easily reverse things. I know, but I'm not going to be the one to pull the plug on the divorce. Orlando would be insufferable if I did. What did he say about your artistic handiwork on his cherished photograph? <laughs> he hasn't seen it yet. I hid it under the stairs. Oh, the nail varnish remover didn't work. Just made the glass go cloudy. I suppose I shall have to have it reframed before he sees it. Ooh, it's Benedict. Hello, darling. Is everything all right? Are you on your way? Oh, no. What is it? What's happening? Oh, he's not coming. The snow's really heavy across the Pennines and it's drifting. Well, they've cancelled all the trains. Oh. OK, darling. Yes, of course. She'll understand. Oh, you go back to your flat, Benedict. You sound a bit wheezy to me. You are using your inhaler, aren't you? All right, then. We'll speak tomorrow. Love you. What are we going to do? Well, surely you have an understudy. Well, no. There isn't anyone. What about this Harry? Oh, he wanted to play the part, and I know he's learned the lines... He's a little bit old for the part, really, but he looks young. He's just... 
I feel that Jesus needs to be thin. I still feel awful. He even brought his own loincloth. <laughs> Extra large, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, of course it's your vision, but wasn't Jesus always going out eating and drinking? I can't imagine he was that skinny. Well, Harry will just have to hold his stomach in. Bless him. He's a lovely guy. Yes, I'm looking forward to meeting him. I missed him the other day. He was out getting more biscuits or something. I didn't really get the chance to meet Verity either. Yeah, I think uh, I think I'll wander down to the football ground and speak to Orlando. He'll know what to do. Oh, well, if you're going out, shall I finish off your sewing? Oh, would you? Thanks, yeah, I'll, um, I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh, oh, take your time. Go and find your Orlando. Yeah, yeah. I might have guessed I'd find you in here. We have just finished at the football ground. Your stage is set up and safe, Madam Director. Here, have a seat, Adele. What can I get you to drink? Oh, thanks, Harry. Um, gin and slimline, please. You don't need slimline, Adele. Oh. I've set up makeup bar and Orlando has set the timer for the heating to come on early in the morning, so it'll be nice and cosy. Can't have you girls getting cold. Speaking of getting cold, I'm worried that you're going to freeze in your costume, Orlando. It's only thin cotton. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Verity. But I'll be fine. I can always nip into the changing room in between scenes and we can have an ug for warmth. Oh, stop it, Orlando. Yes, Orlando, stop it. <laughs> we have a problem. Benedict can't make it. The trains have all been cancelled due to the snow. Well, I did offer to drive to Lancaster to pick him up in the first place. And I still could. No, no, it's too late now. Besides, the roads are just as bad. I don't want you risking your neck. Oh, careful, Adele. <laughs> you almost sound as if you care. Do I? I'm just thinking about having to find a Jesus and a Pontius Pilate at short notice, that's all. Well... Looks like Harry will have to don his loincloth and do the business. He would have every reason not to after I was rude to him. I'm sure if you ask him nicely, he'll do it. He'll do anything for you. <laughs> What's so funny? Avi has a crush on you. Don't be silly. I'm not. Orlando told me. Blab her mouth. That was supposed to be a secret. Oops. Sorry. He does have a bit of a crush on you, but I'm sure he'll grow out of it. Oh, dear. Here's your gene t Adele. Oh, oh thanks. Thank, thank you, Harry. Harry, Adele has a favour to ask of you. Just name it. Anything for you, Adele. <laughs> <coughs> uh, Benedict can't get here due to the weather, so I was wondering if you would be willing to step into the breach and play the part of Jesus, after all. But who's going to play Judas? I can't do both parts. I can double if necessary. Pilate and Judas aren't in any scenes together. Well, yes then. If you need me to, Adele. <laughs> yes, well, the production needs you, but thanks, Harry. Very graciously done, my lovey. Of course, Verity. I shall be relying on you to transform me totally from Judas to Pilate with your makeup skills. Oh, um, yes. I think it would probably be better if Kat looked after your makeup, Orlando. Uh, no offence, Verity. Oh, thank goodness. I'm only a beginner. Can I have a private word with you, please, Orlando? Oh, sounds like I'm in trouble again. Please tell me Harry doesn't have a crush on me. OK. Harry doesn't have a crush on you. Really? No. I'm sorry, my love. He does. He asked my permission to have a crack at you. <laughs> Quite sweet, really. Oh, dear. Uh, you said yes, I suppose. I didn't say anything. I, I think he regretted saying it out loud, so I changed the subject. You're going to have to help me with this. Look, I don't want to hurt him. Um, what if you told him... We're thinking about cancelling the divorce before the absolute comes through. Can we do that? Yes. If you'd bothered to look at the decree in Nysai, you'd have seen it. Should I take from this that 
You don't want to complete our divorce? Not necessarily. It's just a way of putting Harry off without hurting him. Yes, I, I suppose it might be. OK, I'll have a quiet word with him. Harry! We want you to be the first to know. Adele and I have decided not to go through with the divorce. Is that right, Adele? Uh, yes. You should have said it a bit louder. They didn't hear you in the snug. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. I don't know the power of my own voice. As a stuntman, I don't usually have to speak. Oh, wow. That's lovely news. Well, congratulations. Oh, look, it's snowing again. It looks like confetti. Oh, yes, I think I'd better get back to the house. I left Cat mending costumes. I'll walk with you, Adele. Bye, Harry. See you at home, Orlando. Can't wait, my sweetheart. Bye. You can punch me if you like. Why would I do that? Well, I was about to ask your wife out. No wonder you went quiet when I mentioned it. I didn't realise. I can't blame you for not letting her go. She's a stunning lady with a heart of gold. Mm. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Cheers. Where do you want the costumes, Adele? Uh, through there, in the away changing rooms. I, I want to keep this area clear for makeup and refreshments. Mind your backs. I'll open the door for you, Harry. Thanks. Oh, hello, you two. I'll just get the rest of the costumes out of my car. Is this where we're doing the makeup? Yep. The changing room is through there. It's, it's mixed, I'm afraid. Oh, it's okay. I'm not shy about that sort of thing. Once the show gets underway, we won't have time to ogle each other. <laughs> Spoken like a true professional. Harry's just putting the costumes in cast order. Oh, that sounds like Harry's. Oh, Verity, this is my friend, Kat. Oh, I'm so pleased to meet you at last. I've heard lots about you. Adele says you worked on Coronation Street. Oh, hello, Verity. Yes, I used to. It was quite a long time ago, though. I teach makeup techniques now. I just find it all so exciting. I'm looking forward to learning the tricks of the trade from you. Well, a willing student is always a joy. Perhaps you'd like to show me your makeup bar. Open the other door for me, Adele. I'll take these through. Thanks, darling. Harry, this is the rest of the gear. Cheers. Just dump it over there and I'll sort it. Oh, is the kettle on yet? Oh, do you ever think of anything else? You should know the answer to that, sweetheart. They're like a couple of lovebirds, aren't they? I was so pleased to hear they're not getting divorced after all. Yes, what a surprise for everyone. I think they should renew their wedding vows. Don't you agree, Cat? Now there's an idea. Well, I don't know about that. What a great idea. We could have a ceremony in this country. <laughs> I don't know if you know, Verity, but Adele and I married in Las Vegas. No. You guys are just so amazing. Did you get married by an Elvis impersonator? Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, um, gee, I wish I'd been there. Please say you'll renew your vows as a public declaration of your love for each other. I could be a bridesmaid and Harry could be the best man. Well, that would be a first. I've never been a best man. What are we talking about? Adele and Orlando are getting remarried. Calm down, Verity. We are not getting remarried. We still are married. Oh, you know what I mean? This makeup is really very good, Adele. Who chose. It can't be. M? Who? Henry? Who's Henry? Cat? Cat, are you OK? <gasps> ah! Here, Cat, sip this. What is it? It's just some brandy. It's good for shock. Where did he get that from? He always has his hip flask with him. Oh, you'd be surprised at the number of people who get stage fright. A nip of brandy usually helps. Oh... Has Cat got stage fright, then? Something like that. Come on, Verity. I need to go home and collect a few props. You can come with me. Oh, OK. 
I thought we had everything. It can't be. I think you'll find it is. <coughs> Thanks, Orlando. I, I think I'm OK now. Obviously, you two need to talk. I'll be through in the changing room. Well, what a shock. Yes. Do you mind if I sit down? Oh, of course not. It's been a long time. Almost 20 years. Now look, I, I want to apologise for putting you on the wrong train. Did you get home in the end? Yes. You haven't been worrying about that, have you? I slept on the platform at Downham Market. Thank goodness it was summer. I should have come and looked for you, but, but I couldn't drive my car. I'd had too much to drink. Did you manage to contact your husband? I expect he came and collected you. No. He wondered what had happened to me. But everything was OK. We divorced. Oh, not because of that. Well, partly. Well, Sam was always a little bit handy, if you know what I mean. I finally came to my senses and left him. Well, that's why I changed my name. I didn't want him finding me. Oh, I am sorry. You poor thing. <laughs> oh, what, 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 what have I said? I, uh, sh shall I get Orlando? Oh, no, I'm all right. It's just that you remind me so much of someone. Not your ex-husband. No. You, you remind me of our son. Oh, what, Benedict? Yes. Why would I remind you of Benedict? <gasps> Our son. Benedict is 19 years old. You mean our son. <gasps> Orlando! What is it? I think we might need your hip flask again. Harry's fainted. More canopies, anyone? I'll have another one of those devils on horseback. Seems rather appropriate at Easter. Ooh, me too. A scrummy. Help yourself. Uh, another drink, Verity? Yes, please. I must be careful. I do tend to get drunk very quickly. Two glasses and I'm anybody's. Go on, enjoy yourself. Have a third and be everybody's. <laughs> Thank you, Orlando. Here she is, the love of my life. Well done, sweetheart, on a fabulous passion play. Yes, I've been meaning to ask. Why is it called a passion play? There's not a lot of that going on, is there? Yes, it's a mystery, isn't it? The vicar's coming later. I think you should ask him. All right, I will. I suppose it went well, ish. It were a triumph. Well, apart from the incident on the cross. Yes, Adele, sorry about that. <laughs> what happened? I was stuck in the dressing room. I didn't see the ending. Oh, you missed all the excitement. Ah, Harry wasn't as fat as he thought he were. And the loincloth were a tad large. It were at the critical point when he breathed his last that the loincloth did the same and slipped to his ankles. <laughs> No, it wasn't. Well, yes, I suppose it was. Fortunately, Harry had taken my advice and had his thermals on underneath. Two pairs, in fact. And appropriately, they were flesh-coloured. <laughs> Verity, can you give me a hand in the kitchen, please? So, how did your lunch at the Crown go? We didn't go to the pub. Em and I had fish and chips at my house. Well, we had a lot to discuss and we didn't want anyone listening in. Very wise. M now, is it? She's always been my M. Yes, and I shan't be calling him Henry, though. I much prefer Harry. Stuffed mushrooms, anybody? Mmm. Fancy you two meeting again after all those years. 
think it's very romantic. Oh, quite passionate, in fact. Look at them both. They're blushing like teenagers. I reckon there were more than fish and chips being shared at lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> Weather permitting, we're going up to Lancaster on Monday so I can meet Benedict. Oh, that's marvellous. Do you know, I can see the family likeness now. Benedict has your eyes, Harry, and your gentleness. So, you two, what does the future hold? Well, we're just going to spend some time getting to know each other. Harry's going to rent his place out here and commute to Thirsk from York. Oh, so he's moving in with you. Uh, Well, not entirely. We're taking a leaf out of your book. Since my parents died and Benedict's gone to uni, the house has become too big for me. Harry can have his own apartment on the top floor and we'll see how things go. I can't wait. This calls for champagne. Adele, haven't we got some of the good stuff somewhere? Yes. Well, yeah, I was keeping it to wet our grandchild's head, but that's not for a couple of months yet. Oh, it's uh, it's under the stairs. Start. I've never had real champagne before. I think you've probably had enough. You can have a long glass of water before you drink any more. Your mum won't forgive me if I send you home drunk. (laughs) In fact, uh, I'll phone her and tell her you're staying the night. I've put the champers on ice. Um, sweetheart, there's a couple of things I'd like to know. What are they, my darling? Well, firstly... Why some of the Roman soldiers were wearing skirts made out of my vintage leather jacket, the remains of which I have just found. And secondly, who the hell has scribbled graffiti all over my favourite photograph? Oh, I forgot it was in there. I've been meaning to tell you. (laughs) 